Hello fellow tappers, it's Aloha for her and today I am coming back for a very special video because today I'm going to be going through how you can get rich in cash in The Simpsons Tapped Out. So this video is a sequel to the How to Get Rich in Donuts video and basically it is the reason why I'm making this video is because you need to be rich in cash to get rich in donuts because in order to farm donuts you need a lot of cash. So in this video, I'm going to be going through a number of methods to which will collectively help to help you get rich in cash. So let's get started with tip Here number one. Here's the first tip. And the first tip is basically to master your character jobs. So let's have a look no! at Homer. So obviously uh, there are a lot of different uh, quests at the moment, but aside from those quests, here are the ordinary jobs that Homer has. So, obviously, with the jobs and the cash that a character earns, if you do, if you do more jobs, uh, so more short duration jobs. So if you it, jobs, if, so if you did twenty four uh, shop at the quickie marts in twenty four hours, then you'd be making more than doing one twenty four hours for six hundred. Because 24 uh, lots of 60 is way more. But basically, all this is, really, is finding a schedule. So obviously, if you can log into the game a lot, then by all means, uh, set more short duration tasks. So you're going to be earning extra cash. And it just depends on how often that you can go on the game. But if you know that you've set a short duration task, and you're not going to be on the game for a while... So say, like, you're going to bed. For me, I'd set a 12-hour task, so you make the most of that duration of time, because you'd rather get the, the most money's worth for that period of time that you are away, instead of risking uh, forgetting to go back on the game and missing out on a load of lost cash from just doing a 60-second task because you wanted to go on an hour later. So it's just about finding the right balance. And what I would do uh, in order to keep a good schedule job schedule for your characters is um, basically to set alarms which will yeah really help you and most people nowadays have like a lot of different ways of setting timers whether it's just on your phone or tablet and I mean I can ask my speaker now so it shouldn't be too hard to do and honestly the amount of cash that you're going to be earning from this is is going to be game changing if you get this right and um it is harder than it sounds, and even I still can't really get a good job schedule, so it's uh, really important to do. But aside from that, there are some uh, some duration tasks that I think aren't really going to be ones that you're going to want to do. So I would not advise doing 8, eight or 12 hours. So with Homer, obviously, um, to drink at most, 8 hours. The difference between the 8 hour and 12 hour task for cash is massive and it's only another 4 hours on top and um, actually you don't earn very much compared to a 4 hour look at that so I wouldn't advise doing the 8 hour tasks I would advise doing the 12 hours and 4 hour tasks particularly if you can um, and also the 24 hour task you can earn like another 240 cash off of this uh, due to um due to just doing two 12-hour tasks instead of a 24-hour task. And if you do this for all of your characters, you're going to be earning a real big bonus of cash if you if you can uh, avoid... I would advise avoiding the 24-hour task and the 8-hour task because I think that they give the worst value for their duration length. And obviously, if you can log on every hour, do so. Um, and also, if you are able to log on the game a lot or um, when you're setting your timers you will be able to speed up your character task for free when there's 10% of the duration of the task since you started it left so for example if you get home into shop at the quickie mart 10% uh, of that time is 6 minutes so if I go back to the task and there's 6 minutes left I can actually speed up that character task for free so you're going to be getting 10% more productivity from all Springfieldians, if you go in when there's 10% of that 
tasks left, which means that you're going to be able to start the jobs 10% faster. And, and that is obviously going to increase your money a lot. And so the other aspect of this is the Office of Unemployment. So obviously this is an interesting building because um, it does cost money for you to set your jobs. But um, it does mean that if you don't have enough time to settle your jobs and you've got a lot of characters like me on this town, that you can do it. So what I would advise doing, if you know you've got the time to set the character jobs individually, then I would do it. But if you want to set a load of short duration tasks and you don't really have a lot of time to log on, instead of not logging on as often, I would set the shorter tasks um, with it rather than going all through them all manually. So it's also important in regards to the jobs to remember the, the importance of this building, by the way, which you unlock um, quite later on in the game. I think it's around level 50. Um, but when you do the quest, that when you start the game, you'll eventually get to it. Yes, so basically, I would advise using this building if you have to. If you've got all the time in the world, then don't. I think most people it's really useful for, so I would advise carry on using that, because it doesn't really take much money for the amount of characters and cash that you're earning. It just doesn't really compare. It's a really tiny fraction of that cash you're earning, and uh, it doesn't. it's not a hindrance on your cash number. Also, um, I must mention that in regards to jobs, if you have character costumes, they earn 50% more cash added onto the original earning of the character. Um, and also, so in that case, if you've got a costume and you don't need to do any kind of uh, quests or anything, then do use the costume instead of the ordinary character to do the job because you're getting 50% more cash. And also, uh, you want to be getting a lot of premium characters from the mystery box. Uh, yearbook mystery box because they earn 100% more money than ordinary characters so that is uh, like Mandula uh, she's going to earn 260 instead of wait 260 instead of yeah 175 so she's actually earning I think it's 100% more or maybe 50% more I may have that wrong I think it might actually be 50% more but anyway you want a load of premium characters and Investing in characters in the yearbook mystery box is a really good idea because uh, for that amount of donuts, you're going to be able to get more characters doing more jobs. And this is how, this is the best way, the most effective way of building your town up. And uh, yeah, and I have uh, actually released some videos on the top 10 yearbook mystery box prizes for uh, in terms of characters and the amount of money that they earn. Um, so I would advise watching that one, and that will be in the link in the description below. I will put that there. And also, yeah, so if you can get a character every 30 donuts, your town is going to grow so quickly. Yeah, so quickly. And uh, that is the best way to expand as a new player. And also ensure you do all the events, because there's characters in those too. And so what's crucial, as well as this, is having a high money and XP bonus percentage. So all your character jobs and the revenue they're going to earn are actually going to be worth something. And it can really make a massive difference if you also get this right. So this is going to be leading on to tip number so two. Tip number two is to basically place the Springfield Heights buildings. And so the buildings that you want to place in the Springfield Heights are the Business Centre, the Modern Mansion, the Valet Parking, the Classic Mansion, and the Deluxe Condo, and don't worry about the exclusive resort. Fire! 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 I'm a fire engine! There you go. <laughs> Accidentally collected the smart devices. So, for the uh, 10 business centres, you get 20% boost just for placing them, all at level 1. So don't worry about levelling up the buildings for the extra money and XP boost percentage, because it doesn't matter whether you level up, level them up, because they're still going to have the same money and XP percentage boost. And, uh, yep, yeah, so for the modern mansions, you're going to be getting 50%. For the valet parkings, the 10 valet parking, you're going to be getting 30%. For the 10 classic mansion, you're going to be getting 40%. And for the 10 deluxe condo, you're going to be getting 10%. So a grand total of 150% money and XP boost. So that is going to be a massive boost if you haven't done this already. And it's... 
it's gonna it's gonna triple your earnings if you um if you've just started the game. Just around triple your earnings, which is just incredible. So I really would advise doing this and remember, don't bother leveling up the buildings. Um because it's a waste of time. To get the bonus first, unlock the land, and then place all of ten of each of these buildings that I named, and then you're gonna be onto a winner. And so Moving on to tip number three, which is going to involve spending donuts for percentage boost. And uh, in particular, tip number three, the beach hideaways. And so for 40 donuts, you can get a beach hideaway that will earn 20% total money and XP boost for placing them. And so there is one uh, kind of downside to these which is that you have to uh, use Springfield Heights currency to level them up and these the beach hideaways are you have to level them up in order to collect the pieces and each of the pieces that you place um, add to your bonus money and XP percentage boost so you want to have all of the pieces placed in the water I mean mine are very messy at the moment but I've just purely got them down for the percentage boost and so obviously it's another reason why you should be really grinded in your Springfield Heights and as boring as it is um, yeah it, it's something that needs to be done and really does help uh, help spark development for, your, for all your towns and so collectively when we're thinking about 20 donuts and we're getting 40% sorry 40 donuts and 20% money and XP boost for 40 donuts which is very very good and you can get 5 of these in total you're going to be getting uh, two for 200 donuts. You're going to be getting 100 percent more bonus money and XP boost on top of the 250 previously that you've got from the height, which is incredible. So that's an extra 250. That and that um, once you've got the jobs and everything together, with, along with the building income, you're going to be you're going to be already pretty rich in cash. So there we go. So I'm actually going to be moving on to the next on to next one. So, and this involves really utilising the yearbook mystery box for high percentage boosts. And so there are certain decorations within the mystery box that give you really, really high money and XP percentage boosts. And I'm going to name them, uh, the, the top ones. And there are many more which also give uh, a really high money and XP percentage boost. And if you look on websites, then they will give the values for you. So... Uh, as decorations uh, that come on their own, we have the Whacking Day Bundle with 10.75% XP, money and XP percentage boost. We've got the Country Flag Bundle, 7.5% once all the flags are placed. We've got the Three-Eyed Whale for 7%, the Whale for 7%, the Dragon Bundle for 6.75% once all the three dragons are placed. We've got the Radar Station for 5%, the Donut Boat for 5%, and the Murder Horn for 5%. Got the Rad Station Air Fortress for five percent and Springfield Gorge for five percent and Satan's Anvil for five percent, and then we've got the Truckosaurus for four point seven five percent as well. And there are loads more of these um, that are just underneath. These are the top ones, so I thought I'd name the top ones so that you can aim for those in the yearbook mystery box. And for thirty donuts, some of these boosts are really really good. Not as good as the beach hideaways. I would uh, spend your donuts in those before. Um, in order to increase your, uh, your bonus money and XP percentage boost, but still really effective, especially some of the top ones here, which is why I've named the top ones. And there's also some that come with a battery. Uh, so, sorry, a um, you get decorations with characters or buildings with characters that earn a bonus money and XP percentage boost. We've got the Circle of Death with Meat Hook. We've got Conrad. Um, we've got Eisenhower's four by four. Um, we've got the Fiesta Terrace, we've got the Ghost Pirate Airship, we've got Mighty Pig Practice Rink, Outland Sign, Springfield National Park, Scary Dock and Signor Ding Dong's Doorbell Fiesta because I named those because they have um, XP boost for, from 4, ranging from 4 to 5% and you're also going to be getting a character as well so it's going to be doing performing two functions for you, just for 30 donuts, which is really, really good. And if you can really target these certain prizes, then honestly, your town is going to develop very, very quickly. 
and so we're going to be moving to tip number five and so that is to utilize the mystery box and so i actually did do an opening on this um over a hundred mystery boxes i opened up and uh that was spending originally 600 donuts but i actually ended up with a lot left over at the end and with that 600 donuts i think it was around 40 percent i'd like i maybe check the video just to be sure i think it was 40 percent or maybe even no it was 60 percent 60 percent bonus money and xp that i earned because the news fans are going to be getting two percent bonus each the uh the itchy and scratchy billboards are going to be getting one percent bonus each and you're going to be getting so many donuts back as well so i would advise doing this uh, opening the mystery box um it's not as effective as some of the yearbook prizes um but it is more effective so say those top yearbook prizes that i did mention it is less effective uh i'd get those before you open the mystery box in terms of the boost but after you've got the top yearbook prizes you start to get into the lower boosts i would definitely uh use the mystery box instead because you're going to be getting loads of donuts back and you're going to be getting tons of uh attempts to get these uh high money the money and xp percentage boost uh items such as the news van and the billboard um it's honestly going to make a massive difference to your town and honestly uh, the probability of getting these is really high and again uh, i'll remind you to go and watch that video on opening over 100 of them as that is going to give a real example of just how common these things are so there we go so moving on to number six um, we have utilizing these cash earning buildings and so the first one i'm going to begin this is the springfield downs and so i also made a video on the springfield downs separate video there and, and how you can earn 2,000 cash on average each time from that one. And we've also got Clusa's farm. And so, again, with these, like the character jobs, uh, the more you go on the game, the more cash you're going to be able to get. And so the perfection for Clusa's farm it earns 640 cash per hour. So that is the highest earning crop it per hour if you uh, play the game a lot and i would particularly advise these methods for lower level players and i think it does get less important as you get higher level um so basically this method is for lower level players and not higher level players because this is a lot of time to invest into s very small amounts of money but for some people this will get them a long way if you're just starting the game then uh, doing doing these things will help so obviously perfection is the most effective crop but obviously if you don't want to risk it and um, you know that after a certain time you're only going to be able to be on it's worth setting a longer crop even um even though you yeah just in case you might not be able to log on in time and forget to log on so it's better to just set a longer one and actually earn more money just in case you forget that's what i do but like i say said earlier on set an alarm it's really going to help you and so moving on to the channel six we're talking about a little bit more cash here and um, that you're going to be earning per hour on average so the most effective way of earning cash is the weather report for 220 cash per hour so that's i believe that's every 60 minutes but it depends because um at the moment there's the actual christmas special which gives you the opportunity to earn quite a lot i think i think you you get a reward of 1500 every three hours so if there's a christmas special one or an event an event show that's that's available then that will be the best one but um on any other day the best one to do is the weather report um the one that i advise doing is uh, the live news report because that's going to give you more than the regular programming which does take the same amount of time but does earn less cash definitely don't do that one um because yeah you might as well just do the one that earns more cash for the same duration <laughs> so yeah and i wouldn't advise doing the longer period ones like the channel six sports week it doesn't earn very much cash and whilst it is a lot it does look like it's a lot of cash to earn 
you're going to be earning more cash from doing more short duration ones. And I'm sure that most people can go on more than once a week. So I wouldn't do the Channel 6 sport, Sports Week either. And actually backtracking to Cleese's farm, we have the Triffid. And it says the reward is the end of humanity. But don't don't purchase them because they really don't do anything and it's a waste of money. So definitely don't go buying those. So going on to the KBBL radio, which are locked by the Friends prizes. So make sure that you add a lot of Friends towns. It's pretty easy nowadays to add a lot of Friends. Um, yeah, so that's how you get that one. And so the best show is the Birch Barlow show. And the Bill and Marty show is also pretty good. Um, if you can say if you do four hour tasks, what I do is four, three lots of four hour tasks. And if you um, have a schedule with these buildings as well, where you also you stick to the job schedule. So you have every four hours you set a Bill and Marty show along with your, your jobs as well. Then that's going to you're more likely to collect a lot more money off of these things if you have the same schedule. So there we go. That is that one, another one really. And yeah, wouldn't advise doing the KBBL classic hits as that is a very long duration one. And most people can go on more often than than that duration of that task. It's just, uh, I wouldn't advise doing it. And then if you are, I'm talking ultra new to the game, this is quite a small amount of cash to worry about, but the driving theatre comes with the space mutant that is in the yearbook mystery box. The um, Happy Little Elves, the treat call, earns 86.7 cash per hour um, that I figured out. So obviously that could mean quite a lot, but obviously it is a lot of hassle over quite a lot of money. So I'd say if you're really, really new to the game, then that is a good idea. But other than that, I wouldn't worry. And so the drive-in theatre is available in the yearbook mystery box for 30 donuts. But like I say, it doesn't really make a difference, a lot of a difference to the game, but it is a little boost. It's a very small boost. So if you can get your hands on that and you've got a really good lineup in the yearbook mystery box, then I would, uh, I would mark the drive-in theatre as a more favourable prize in the yearbook mystery box so i'm sorry that that may have been a bit heavy but hopefully you can pause pause the video at different bits to ensure that you get all the information you need i know this this is pretty jumbled but um yeah i hope it helps and so this is the last tip really or the last i've got another tip after this which is an extra one but tip number seven is don't house farm. So obviously, this may be really surprising to you, as in my original Rich and Donuts, How to Get Rich and Donuts tip, I did recommend to house farm. But what I found um, over the years of playing the game, it seems like house farming does cost a lot of money to buy the houses because, well, when you start building the first houses, it is pretty cheap. But it really quickly gets a very expensive thing to do and it uses up a lot of land. So... I'd say there's a lot more negatives to positives with this method. It uses up a lot of your town, which can be used for maybe perhaps donut farming instead. And for very little reward, I mean, these houses don't really earn a lot of income, use a lot of land. And yeah, just really, it, it's not worth building these and spending the time to build up a house farm. Um when you've got jobs, if you have a really solid job schedule and a really solid money and XP percentage boost, then honestly, you're going to be onto a winner with that. Like you don't need houses as well. That is, um, so that's really important. I would advise not house farming. It's a pretty outdated method of earning cash and uh, doesn't earn you very much money and a lot of effort for very little reward. So that is that. And also the uh, other thing, which is um, a bit odd because I've got it jumbled up here. But um, it's basically these. So it's the exchanging your donuts for cash. And so this is obviously a really bad one. So this is the most one uh, that you can exchange donuts for 5,400,000 cash. And obviously the amount of donuts on these uh, that you're going to be putting in, you can't actually get those donuts back once you've 
once you put the donuts into the cache. And obviously, this is going to be a big problem because a lot of people will think, ah, oh, with the amount of cash that I can get exchanged from donuts, be enough to uh, donut farm with the cash? Um, no, it's not. That was a very simple answer. Um, it's an absolute rip-off. So, and never, ever get these to get cash. Never spend your donuts on getting cash, ever. Um, it's worth the patience of owning the cash and... You should never, there should never be a good enough reason to ever exchange them. Like, um, and I would ensure, to to ensure that you don't accidentally purchase these, I would uh, get the confirm, confirm purchase on. But honestly, this is a real, uh, a real minefield. If you, if you ever accidentally do this, you can spend a lot of donuts and honestly, the cash is just, it's, it's not what it should be. So, yeah, definitely steer away from the cash to the donut to cash exchange exchange functions in the game. So there we go. That was pretty much it for this video. And I know that this is quite a lot to take in. But honestly, if you incorporate a lot of these methods, and I'd say at the start of the video, there were more important tips going to the less important tips. But um, if you incorporate every single one of these, you're going to be getting really rich in cash and therefore getting rich in donuts. So there you go. I really hope that helped. So, sorry again. It was a bit of a long one. But um, yeah, a lot of information that I thought was worth sharing. So there we go. So that is going to bring me to the end of this video. But remember to um, become a member. There will be memberships coming out soon if you haven't already and a member of the LOR for crew. And it would also be awesome if you could join my Discord server, which you'll find the link to in the description below. And it would also be amazing if you could hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and good night.